Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Daryl Breen. Well, the nation has been in raptures this week with the Labour leadership handover. People are talking of nothing else. Tony Blair is determined not to be bullied, however, into a decision by the Labour Party. He will only go when George Bush tells him to. <laughs> it's got to be Blair's decision. In the same way, it'll be Saddam's decision when to drop through the hole after the trap door opens. <laughs> Elsewhere, according to recent government figures, since 2004, 600,000 immigrants have come to England to work, half of them in the Premiership. <laughs> Opinions vary on the benefits of immigration. According to one poll, it's great, I've got a job as a plumber. <laughs> Let's just take a moment to enjoy the irony of an Irish man making jokes about immigrant workforce in England. <laughs> Coach your turn, gatekeeper. OK. As a terror threat caused chaos at airports, Heathrow passengers were met with the unlikely sight of burly security guards tasting baby milk, particularly embarrassing for mothers who were still breastfeeding. <laughs> Can I get on the plane? Can I? Uh, uh, uh. Because of the ban on cosmetics at security, there is a six-foot-high pile of lipstick and mascara, or a stewardess, as she prefers to be called. <laughs> Joining me tonight are six of the country's top comedy performers, Andy Parsons, Clive Anderson, Russell Howard, and Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Jeannie Asheray. Welcome to you all. Our first round is headliners. I show the teams a recent photo along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. Here's a picture of Neighbours from Hell, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. So what does BRNS stand for? Is it Blair reinvent Nazi salute? <laughs> <laughs> it's beware riling niggly Scotsman. <laughs> It's, it's not, not that one, anyway. <laughs> is, that, is that just how you spell the gunshot noise that Blair's making there? <laughs> <laughs> Blair resign! Oh. Never, shithead! <laughs> I'm completely intrigued by the fact that Blair is doing the long established cap in yo ass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's actually, yeah. You know? He's actually what's singing what's along to uh, a bit of NWA. Fuck <laughs> the police. He's is a it Blair fan. raps nigger shit? <laughs> The B is for Blair, by the way, for Brown, if that brings you any closer. Blair, Blair, Blair resigns next summer. Mm, yes, next next summer. I'll give you that. Uh, absolutely, it's Blair retiring next summer, is the actual right. answer. This refers to Tony Blair's big statement that he will stand down within the next 12 months, but is still refusing to name the precise date. You all excited by this? Isn't it the best, most fun story ever? Isn't it? <laughs> uh, dragging his carcass across the papers. <laughs> uh, <every day. laughs> Yeah, he's genuinely very worried about retiring, isn't he, Tony Blair? Because he's in his 50s and there are no jobs for people in their 50s. So he doesn't work. <laughs> he doesn't want to work on the inquiry desk at B&Q. <laughs> there was a memo released, actually, that uh, said some of the programmes he should have... There, there are three programmes mm -hmm. named that he should appear on as part of a, well, kind of a Barbara Streisand-type farewell tour uh, that he's planning to do over the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. Do you know what they are? Pimp Ex My Ride. Not Pimp My Ride. <laughs> <laughs> He would be great on that. that. They, um, he's going to appear on Songs of Praise, which would just be a whole episode of him praying for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's, he's on Blue Peter because Cherie wants the badge from Blue Peter so she can sell it on eBay. <laughs> he could be on Time Team, digging for weapons in Iraq. <laughs> Oh, when did Blue People, when was the last place that you'd actually get in touch with the youth of the nation? It's better than Songs of Praise, isn't it? Well, okay, well, if, if, if his <laughs> aim is to get to young people, then program. Songs of Praise is a massive step in the wrong direction. I'll give that. <laughs> if, he wants to, if he wants to get to young people, he should just do a happy slapping and figure out how he's feeling. That was me, slap, big tone. <laughs> I think it was my space page. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tony has no friends. This is me uh, on his own. <laughs> just, just Tony Blair on a banana boat on his own. <laughs> That's, what a terrible metaphor to be for your life, just a banana boat on your own. Yeah. It's great. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> so they, should put him on, they should put him on Love Island, just <laughs> him and John Leslie. <laughs> Day four, Blair finally, <laughs> Blair, Blair finally succumbs to sleep. Leslie is ready to pounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
Gwera is, right, is that it's just like the Lord of the Rings, isn't it? He's got addicted to the power. He's got addicted to using the ring. <laughs> and oh, Trixie Gordon! <laughs> Naughty <laughs> Chancellor, it's ours, the precious! <laughs> Look at him, it's drained, it's drained life from him. If he stayed as Prime Minister for another six months, he'd be living in a cave catching fish with his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> he's meant to be after Margaret Thatcher's record, though, isn't he? Is that not the point? Uh, that well, he's endured for until, until 11 years, isn't that the, the... If he waits until next summer, he can be the most hated Prime Minister <laughs> ever. <laughs> I, just think, I don't know what kind of job you can do where you're sacked, but you go, I'm sacked, great. Well, I'll give you a list of dates when I can leave. <laughs> <laughs> also gets a bigger pension, apparently. If like, he ten stays years, ten years. Yeah. If you stay ten years, he gets 81 grand a year. And if he goes before ten years, he gets 59 grand a year. Oh, well, have you yeah. researched this carefully? Have you ambitions to be Prime I Minister am yourself? Britain's <laughs> dullest man. <laughs> <laughs> He ironically gets a round of applause for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't the most cryptic resignation ever? I'm leaving this year sometime. This might be my last party conference. My first is in Windmill, but yeah, not in Germany. Germany. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not leaving. Well, why is he resigned? Why doesn't he just carry on? He won an election. He said, they're only saying you've got to go because he said, I'm going to go. But what? what, what he has no poll tax. Everybody and... hates him. Yeah, yeah, but, but he survived starting a war that people didn't want and uh, charges for students. All these things people thought they were going to rebel against, they didn't. People are just getting agitated because, well, you said you'd go in a few years' time. Well, go now then. <laughs> it's, it's picking on a, on a wounded stag who's what just declared he... himself <laughs> to be wounded. So, yeah. What a wonderful moment and in my life. Who would have thought when I woke up this morning, I'd be next to Clive Anderson saying, you're picking on a wounded stag. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible life. Can, can, can you see a, a deer with Tony Bear's face just, just nuzzling at a, at a, a brook somewhere <laughs> but with his, a slight limp going, I hope they never spot this, uh, and then... Well, when they said he was going to be a Bambi, he was going to be a feeble character who'd be pushed around, but... Uh, but he's a stag. The case. He turns yeah. into a stag. I think the whole deer <laughs> metaphor... What's that? Get... That's stag. <laughs> yeah. That's stag, come on. That's, yeah. really that's, that's, that's a shit stag. That yeah. is a shit stag. <laughs> <laughs> Why does Gordon Brown want to be Prime Minister? That's what interests me. How funny would it be if Brown didn't get the leadership? If somebody it's came inevitable. up the outside and they all voted just to piss Brown off? <laughs> uh, just to see his face after ten years. <laughs> Tony Blair's future remains uncertain, although his series of misleading public announcements and his blatant refusal to give a precise time for his departure should get him a job with any major rail company. <laughs> Part of Tony Blair's farewell tour includes a plan to appear in Songs of Praise, at the end of which a collection plate will be passed around and the highest donor will be given a peerage. <laughs> <laughs> I think in that round, I think I'm going to have to give the points to Russell and his team there. <laughs> the next round is called Between the Lines and it features Hugh and Frankie. Would you make your way to the press pit, please? In this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news addressing the media while the other translates what they really mean. Frankie, you are former Iraqi President Saddam Hussein making a speech. Hugh, you will tell us what Saddam is really saying. Hello, campers. <laughs> I really think we're going to miss Rory Bremner. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings from the true president of Iraq. The guys from D-Wing say hello. <laughs> the case against me has been blown up out of all proportion. As have most of the lawyers presenting it. <laughs> Believe me, they have the wrong man. I wonder what the real Saddam is doing now. <laughs> they say that I gassed my own people. Never. Not at these prices. <laughs> you think I am finished? My name still resonates around the world. I was offered 200 grand to do Love Island. <laughs> I believe that I will be found innocent. I believe that I will be found dead. <laughs> I may be in prison, but I can still dream. Tonight, Matthew. <laughs> I want to be Freddie Mercury. 
<laughs> Very good. <clears throat> you get the point, sir. Well done to both of them. Now we play a round called Comedy News Shuffle. This game involves <laughs> Gina, Andy, Frankie and Russell. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is a stand-up challenge. Our random news generator contains a bank of topics. We spin the wheel and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about the subject <coughs> it's landed on. The winner is the team I judge to produce the funniest material. OK, here we go. First topic is the younger generation. Gina wants to go into that. Yes. The younger generation. There's no joy in them. They don't know how to play anymore, kids. They don't believe in Father Christmas. Nothing is going on in their life. My little nephew rings me up two days before Christmas. He's like that. Auntie Gina, this is what I want for Christmas, yeah? <laughs> I want a Sony PlayStation PSP now. <laughs> in Curry's, it's one seventy nine ninety nine. Dixon's one eighty nine ninety nine. But if you go to Game Station, get it for two ninety nine ninety nine with seven games. I booked your taxi. Please go. <laughs> Seven. Oh. <laughs> I told him to get f***ed. <laughs> I've got him connect for bollocks to him. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is junk food. Okay. Russell. Hello. Um, am I allowed to take this out? Or do I have to...? Go for it. Slick. Um... <laughs> <laughs> There was an amazing thing the other day. Uh, apparently, 15% of 2 to 11 year olds in England are now obese, and the government's going to ban telly adverts of junk food till 9 o'clock so the kids can't watch. And you find yourself screaming at the telly, if your two year old's obese, that isn't telly's fault, that's your fault. <laughs> How can you possibly ban the adverts? Ban your fanny until you can look after what plops out of it. <laughs> that is unbelievable. There's ways and means. My dad invented something, right, to make us eat our dinner. My sister would never eat it. She was like, no, it looks disgusting. Dad, no way to eat it, right? My dad invented something called the dinner witch. So, <laughs> my sister was like, it looks disgusting. My dad would wink at me. I'd pop outside, ding-dong, on the doorbell. My dad would then look into my sister's eight-year-old face and go, oh, Kerry, who could that be during dinner time with your plate still so full? <laughs> I don't suppose it could be the dinner witch. <laughs> at which point, my sister would like, hoo, hoo. <laughs> Slick. OK, that leaves us with Frankie and Andy. The next topic is... Airport security. Frankie. <laughs> 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 See, airport security is inconvenient. It's inconvenient if you're a white guy. If you've got a beard and a turban, you're about 18 months away from having to fly naked on a clear plastic plane. <laughs> Disgusted, you know, by that flight from Malaga where the two guys got thrown off because the passengers said they looked dodgy because they were Muslim. Now, that's got a heart, hasn't it? You're getting called dodgy by the sort of scumbags who are flying back from Malaga. <laughs> <laughs> OK, buddy, I'm Muslim, but you're covered in tattoos and 12 years older than your own son. <laughs> OK, Andy, let's see what you've been left with. <laughs> Comedy goes. Ch Charles Clark. Away you go. Exactly what I was hoping to get. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Clark. Man who's just been having a go at Gordon Brown, also having a go in the last six weeks at Tony Blair. <coughs> of course, this was the idiot, ladies and gentlemen, who actually mucked up with the foreign prisoners and deportation. He said he became aware of the problem in July 2005, but he only became fully aware of the problem <laughs> in October 2005. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, if you've got a problem, how long it might take you to go from being aware of the problem <laughs> being fully aware of the problem. <laughs> if it took you more than a day, you'd probably be quite disappointed. <laughs> if it took you four months, you'd have thought he might have resigned straight away. 
Maybe that's why he's been having a go at Gordon Brown and Tony Blair over the last few weeks. He's only just become fully aware that he's been given the bloody sack. <laughs> Welcome to our new typical judge. We'll give points to everyone. Kevin, you're back here. OK, this round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. For each chosen category, I read out an answer, and the players have to guess what the question might be. Russell, which category would you like? Uh, let's go uh, transport. OK, your category is transport. The answer is lipstick, Vaseline and jam. <laughs> <laughs> what is the question? Um, what names did Bob Geldof reject for his kids? <laughs> is it what's a good night out for a Liberal Democrat? <laughs> Is it what's in a fat whore's handbag? <laughs> uh, what three items has Wally the Whale been turned into? <laughs> Is it, can you name three things they have substituted for oranges in my online grocery delivery? <laughs> Is it what are the three worst nicknames to have in prison? <laughs> <laughs> Just what have you eaten this week, posh? <laughs> <laughs> what does the Pakistan bowling attack carry at all times? <laughs> oh, now, now they've gone home, you're very brave. Oh, aren't you? <laughs> better bowlers, yeah. English are. people, OK? <laughs> I don't really know what this cricket thing is. But those chaps seem to be jolly good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it what products do animals miss having tested on them? <laughs> you can test jam on animals. I'll right? show you. you they would have loved that. <laughs> when you test it on the animal, it's like scoop, spread... If you tested spread, that on a bear, you would have loved it. <laughs> this bowl goes a lot better with a bit of strawberry jam. <laughs> <laughs> what could you use to bring down a plane if you were a sorcerer? <laughs> Uh, it is, it is, of course, uh, to do with security. Um, and you know what the exact question would be? What have they banned people from bringing on planes? Yes, what would be among the list of things that are banned uh, to bring on a plane? <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> but isn't the idea is you can make a bomb out of all... If you get enough items with you, you can eventually create an explosive. Yes, if you are yeah. MacGyver. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if people are getting frantic and panicking over men speaking Arabic on the plane, yeah. I'm surely they spotted the passenger beside them suddenly took out some electronics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there were four different kinds of liquid, smooshed them together. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you get nervous if you see someone turning on their mobile phone. <laughs> Never mind getting out a Bunsen burner. <laughs> <laughs> it was genuinely fantastic seeing that, you know, Al Qaeda, whatever, thought, oh, you know, we'll put terror. And all it does, you just see Northerners getting angry. It's supposed to be in Malaga half an hour ago. <laughs> 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 Is it Bin Laden? Yeah. Look at me yeah. eyes. I'll yeah. f kill you. <laughs> <laughs> That was a Ryanair flight. What self-respecting suicide bomber is going to blow up a Ryanair flight? <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, though. I do... I agree with you for one very good reason, because terrorists want to end up in paradise, not 30 miles from paradise. <laughs> <laughs> they have to finish a trip on a coach. <laughs> I don't want to give terrorists ideas, but if there's <laughs> security for planes... <laughs> That's got there's so, there's so many other things you can blow up and cause trouble. You can blow up bridges, trains, cars, buildings. I mean, if, uh, there's no point in making security so tight you can't blow up planes. Yeah, somewhere, it... somewhere in Finsbury Park there's a terrorist <laughs> sitting and a light bulb just wandered on above his head. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the day the restrictions first came in, they were much tighter and I had to fly to Edinburgh and I wasn't allowed to take a book on. They wouldn't allow it. <laughs> what was the and book? I was thinking, well, what was I going to do? I was going to hold you up had the steward. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That actually wasn't there. I thought, what was I going to do? Yeah. Was that I was going to hold up the stewardess with a paper cut. Yeah. Was like, this is war and peace. Yeah. There are 700 more where that came from. <laughs> yeah. And the, the ridiculous thing is that it also applies to pilots. So pilots are not allowed to take normal things on. So they're not allowed to take on plastic cutlery, the pilots, in spite of the fact that they've got an axe in the cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about giving the terrorists some ideas, we've now just found out, or at least I have, there's apparently an axe in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> What's that for? Is that for chopping wood in case they run out yeah. of petrol? Yes, if they, if they, if they, if they, if they, in case 
it's a case of... A wolf comes and disguises itself as a grandmother on the plane. <laughs> And then one of the passengers goes, oh, mm. Granny, what big yeah. teeth you have. <laughs> and luckily the pilot will come out at the last minute and... Uh... This, only the liquid you're supposed to take in, isn't it, is baby milk, right? Mm. And then you've got to taste it in front of security. Now, I don't see how that's necessarily going to stop Al-Qaeda, cos surely they're going to be quite happy to taste liquid explosive that looks a bit like baby milk. They're suicide bombers. <laughs> And go, oh, I'm not tasting the liquid explosive, that might kill me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's don't nasty. Like, don't like the taste of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you can take it on in baby milk bottles, you'll be able to go to the stewardess, Excuse, do you mind warming this explosive up for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, the incompetent test, it goes with baby milk, but forgets to bring a baby. So yeah. it's a bit <laughs> of... <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, winged off it. there are one section of society who've been complaining in the last week that their uh, that their livelihood is, is in danger because of this. suicide Pilots. bombers. <laughs> Not just suicide bombers. <laughs> musicians. Yeah, musicians. Musicians. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Classical yeah. musicians and uh, musicians in general, I suppose, used to be able to you know buy a second seat for their cello or whatever or their Stradivarius and can't do it anymore. And they're all saying we can't do it. They could just test them. Surely you could go. Okay, you've got. A violin, play the violin. Yeah, absolutely. Because it would raise the learning curve for terrorists quite significantly if absolutely. you had to learn how to play the violin for eight years. <laughs> and really, a really level. tense moment, they said, sorry, sir, is that your tuba? And the uh, terrorist would go... Isn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there something wrong with this whole idea that you've got a government now that's telling you how frightened to be? You know, so we get terror alerts and people say, well... Why don't they quantify it? Why don't they go, you should be about as frightened as if you've just fallen in front of a train, but you know that there's not one along for a while. <laughs> <laughs> or you should be as frightened as if an eagle has just flown through your front window, but you know it belongs to next door. <laughs> next door's eagle. <laughs> <laughs> He's in again, yeah, right. with the broom. <laughs> 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 next door's eagle. God almighty. Jesus. They've actually told us we should be a little less afraid, haven't they? Because they, they've reduced it from uh, critical to severe, haven't they, the, the threat level? And below that, substantial and then it's moderate and then it's low. Um, and, of course, the Americans, they've also got a five-point system. They've got red, orange, yellow, blue, green. So I think we can feel reasonably smug about ourselves that we use words... <laughs> ..and we use colours. Why was it alleged that Mardid Azad Amin claimed to be carrying a bomb at Chicago's O'Hare Airport last because week? Because of his name. No, I don't want to <laughs> Was that, the, was that the guy who uh, wouldn't admit that he was actually carrying a penis pump? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Why would he not admit it? Because he was with his mum, which is just... Why is he trying to take a penis pump in his hand luggage? He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't lose it, does he? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the last thing you want to have to do when you arrive in a new town is go and find a penis pump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hard enough finding good Chinese food. <laughs> When all the penis yeah. pump shops were shut. Uh, <laughs> we should have an outlet that sells them in airports. The cock shop. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's, maybe there's, ah, a, there's a secret door in Tyrak. You just say the word. <laughs> cock, come this way, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we're going to have a whole load of people going into Tyrak tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> just going... <laughs> cock! <laughs> What you should have said there is, I don't want to give terrorists ideas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but if you go into Tyra... <laughs> one of the items not allowed on flights were keys, which caused a bit of a delay on one flight when the pilot couldn't start the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Included on the airport's prohibited list is any kind of stew, genuinely, uh, which thankfully put a stop to Al-Qaeda's plan to destroy Canary Wharf with a Lancashire hot pot. <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, I'm going to give the points to Frankie, Hugh and Gina. <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could all make your way over to the performance area. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. Here we go. <clears throat> the first subject is exam questions that were rejected. A lot of people say that the exams are too easy. Is the answer A, yes? <laughs> or B, David Beckham? <laughs> With illustrations, describe the Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> A 
Virgin train is travelling at 120 miles per hour between London and Manchester. What time will it be cancelled? <laughs> if all PE teachers are paedophiles, discuss. <laughs> <laughs> If the world is heating up at two degrees per decade, what is the point of anything? <laughs> <laughs> Spell Mississippi without looking at how we've spelt it in the question. <laughs> <laughs> two cars are speeding. One is being driven by a black man. <laughs> Which one will be stopped? <laughs> Do you think kids spend too much time with their PlayStation? Answer, cross, triangle, <laughs> circle or square. Check the box A, B or C to receive the grade A, B or C. <laughs> <laughs> Sex education practical. Report to me in the stationery cupboard. <laughs> If I add one eighth to one sixteenth, how stoned will I be? <laughs> Can you master this phrase? Do you want fries with that? <laughs> there you go, that's a rather good supper. Famous last word. Stingrays love foreplay. <laughs> I'll bet you I can jump that ticket barrier. <laughs> no, don't shoot me! It's Yoko you want! <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, the closer it gets, the more it looks like a piano. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, Zidane! <clears throat> your mum's a slag! <laughs> He's only got lipstick, Vaseline and jam. <laughs> what trouble can he cause? <laughs> yeah, Jackie, let's go in the open-topped car. <laughs> <laughs> of course it's not a poisonous snake. What would a poisonous snake be doing on a plane? <laughs> Go to Gina, Frankie, and Hugh. That is the end of the show. This week's winners are Gina, Hugh, and Frankie. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy, Clive, and Russell. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Good night. Mock the Week's back next Thursday at 10, part of BBC Two's Pedigree Comedy. Or tomorrow night at 10, feeling their age, but are they really bothered? The Grumpy Old Women.